Welcome back to the line. Congresswoman Xochitl Torres Small, who represents New Mexico's Southern Congressional District, has filed a bipartisan bill that seeks to address doctor shortages in rural areas like those in our state. Ms. Torres Small, along with three other House colleagues, introduced the Resident Physician Shortage Reduction Act of 2019, end quote. Now, if approved, the bill would remove an artificial cap on the number of medical residents funded by Medicare as well. Diane, if it makes it into a law, then add an extra 3,000 medical resident positions each year for the next five years priority given to hospitals for medical residency training programs with an integrated rural track. That makes sense. This makes sense on paper. It, it just does. And I don't think anybody here is, is opposed to this idea. It's just the how we get to this. Is this the right how as you see as you see it here? We don't have a whole lot of information, but I think it's mm -hmm. a great first step. Okay. I, I think that they're a little bit ambitious. Right. Uh, to for they're, they're hoping to have this fifteen thousand by in five years, right? That's three. three that's a big three thousand a year. Yeah, three thousand yeah. a year. That's a big number mm -hmm. because the schools have to gear up for it. Right. Uh, uh, my personal, not concern, but um, is UNM has a rural health program, so they would be ideal to be able to expand right. and put in more things. But there's also uh, been a great focus on osteopathic doctors, and we do have a school in the mm -hmm. Congresswoman's district. Mm -hmm. So I can see why she would have leaned a little bit toward, sure. toward that. Sure. But I don't want there to be a, I don't want UNM to lose mm -hmm. in, in any wording that's in the bill. And I haven't had the opportunity to go over the bill in detail. So uh, I, I want UNM to benefit from this. Mm -hmm. we, we do have students, we do, that go other places right. that we could slot into these slots. But the thing that, that we forget sometimes is, you have to have a, su do a physician supervisor. So if you're going to send these students, residents, out to rural areas, mm -hmm. you have to have a doctor who's supervising them. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. can't be tele telemedicine supervising. That's right. So there, there and also the doctors, our are, are MDs, are, are paid, compensated for taking some of their time right. to oversee uh, the, the residents. So there's lots of little pieces mm -hmm. that to me we don't have answers to. Mm -hmm. Not that we can't make it work. That's right. I'm just thinking the time frames may be just a little bit short. Interesting, Crystal, when I listen to the senator talk about this, there's like a lot of layers of federal money that have to come into play here. Yeah. A lot of layers. Absolutely. And it's ambitious, and we want ambitious, you know, it's a, it's a terrible, you know, problem we have here. Uh, is the Congress in a place to approve something that, you know what I mean, that's going to cost layer after layer of money here? You know, though? and it, it, it's hard to say, especially yeah. even just looking at the sponsors of the bill. You know, a majority of them, you know, granted Alabama has rural communities, mm -hmm. um, New York and Illinois, but not enough to really understand or not a comfortable representation to understand the needs of the New Mexico community, right. especially with the types of, you know, common diagnosis that we get here, like diabetes, mm -hmm. very much affecting the Indian reservations mm -hmm. and the Indian communities, or the Native American that's communities, right. and that, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. But to kind of talk about the federal funding and, and, and how this ex executed, going back to your original point, mm -hmm. how? How are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, if we were to look at the Medicare microcosm of what makes them extremely successful, you've got the hospital itself to work in the rural community community or the medical clinic, you've right. got the nurses, the, the support staff, mm -hmm. and then you've got the quality of life in the community. And I don't know if whether or not the, and I know that Representative Torres Small ran on this platform of mm -hmm. helping rural communities, mm -hmm. especially in the Las Cruces area, but I just don't know if whether or not this is just, a, you know, it's the one-stop shop to solve the rural uh, healthcare problem. Right. I think that there should have been more thought into supporting the actual, or the, the, the municipalities or the counties mm -hmm. that are welcoming these doctors into the area. Mm -hmm. Granted, it does solve a young professional problem, which is I've got $130,000 worth of medical bills. That's right. But if you have $130,000 worth of uh, student loans, I should say, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. of student loans, if I've got this amount, is a job in, in, in Wagon Mound, New Mexico, not dissing the town, mm -hmm. but is Wagon Mound, New Mexico going to be able to help me take care of that student loan forgiveness? That's right. And do I even want to live in Wagon Mound? Mm -hmm. It's a great community. Those are three big questions. Yeah, yeah. That's and right. so I don't know if this health care, uh, it, it's just like when legislators make legislation, right. but they're not really looking at the lens of the actual profession that they're trying to impact. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if it works. Christine, it's amazing how many times we have sat, I have sat at this table and my colleagues, Megan Camerick, others, whenever we do a show about I don't, anything medical, hep C, whatever it is, every one of those stories comes with it, stories of people traveling hellacious distances 
and disrupting their lives tremendously, their entire families, to get up here for treatment. It, 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 it takes over a person's life. You have to build your week around your visits to Albuquerque, coming from Silver City, from all over the place. It's madness. And in the Congresswoman's mm -hmm. campaign ads, she featured the difficulties, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the veteran uh, getting up in the middle of the night because he and his wife have to drive to Albuquerque for right. medical care, mm -hmm. the expectant mother who has to show up in an urban area for prenatal care. Mm -hmm. So uh, she is highlighting what she campaigned on, at least mm -hmm. an aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And it is not uh, uh, just a false issue, it is a very real issue, so yes. I want to point out how else, uh, how how other uh, um, aspects of this bill. I not to get into the weeds about the mm -hmm. details of the bill, but rather to look at also what she also campaigned on, and that was to listen, to try to uh, construct a bipartisan coalition, mm -hmm. and try to get people across the aisle to talk to each other. I was actually impressed that she had a black woman representative mm -hmm. from Alabama, mm -hmm. two rural, two Republicans representing New York and Illinois. Right. There are now 13 co-sponsors on this bill, uh, and she is looking at some issue that doesn't break down easily in partisan divisions. Right. And so I think that's pretty smart politics. That's yeah. not to say that it's just all for show or whatever, but she's she's responding to a constituency mm -hmm. that has real needs. And mm -hmm. so I think that the context of what I see, uh, and I see it in other areas as well, uh, Congresswoman um, Doris Small is also working in a bipartisan manner on immigration and border and issues. Is. Yep. And so she's carving out a place for herself, if all the attention wasn't just on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, yes. uh, yes. we might have some, uh, a young woman right. uh, representative uh, who also should draw some national attention. Mm -hmm. She's steady as she goes, as they say, you know, you know, with that district, some unique things you talked about, interesting. Mm -hmm. So we, interesting as well is this idea of raising the number of residents through Medicaid, uh, Medicare, sorry, my fault in that what they're going to be coming up against is a Congress and a, and a perhaps a uh, administration hostile to the idea of Medicare and the idea of plumping this up a little bit. It's going to have some resistance. You see what I mean here? There's some political landmines here. There's, there's resistance, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned. I mean, it, I, do, I do think, and we've talked at this table a number of times about the importance mm -hmm. of rural communities, um, and in particular, I think, to the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. This is not to say the Democrats don't care, but, but, but that they're... Um, the Republicans have, have done quite well right. in drawing votes from the rural communities. It makes it harder, I think, for a Republican Senate to say, no, this is not something we want. Right. Um, but you're right, at the same time, there's pressure to reduce investment in programs like mm -hmm. Medicare, Medicaid, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so they're gonna have to balance that. One of the things that I think is really challenging about a, a, this bill and about the, about the medical professional pipeline in general mm -hmm. is, um, that it doesn't just, it's not just a matter of trying to get more residents. We need more medical students. Right. We need more students who are preparing for medical school. That's right. We need better STEM education, more, you know, more biology, more, more um, mm -hmm. physiology, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's going to take time to just roll forward. So, so yeah, I, I think probably these hospitals do need more money in order to add more positions, mm -hmm. but they're also going to need money to, to be able to, to build their programs, mm -hmm. and they're going to need to have more medical students to draw from. We'll have to move on now. After the break, we'll chat with the head of Santa Fe's film office about the state's new incentives for movie and TV production.